Today on Trucks and Tractor Power, it's the NMRO All-Star National featuring the cut tire class. All the heavyweights of mud racing are here, including Enos Thomas with his brand new Mad Max, Allen Inlow in Showdown, Buster Smith with Mud Muzzle, and the first lady of mud bogging, Paula Harbuck, in Fortin with Disaster. Coming up next on Trucks and Tractor Power. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power here on the National Network. We're in Bayou, George, outside Panama City, Florida, with lots of sunshine, sand, and mud. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, along with Rich Hooser. And, Rich, mud bog racing is nothing new to this part of the country. That's true, Gary. It's not new at all around here. These guys have been racing down here for a long time. But one thing that is new this year is the NMRO, the National Mud Racing Organization, a sanctioned body that helps them keep everything more organized and a lot of safety involved in this. And of course it brings out the best in the competition and speaking of that, some engines here are valued at over $35,000 in $75,000 racing vehicles. And that's true again, now a lot of these vehicles like you said, this expensive motors and stuff, now they're running alcohol, they're injected, running blowers, and all, also a lot of them are running nitrous oxide which you don't see in a lot of other competitions. Well Rich, normally we have Army Armstrong along with us, he has the weekend off, but we'll take this break and come back for mud bog racing in northern Florida. Welcome back to Bayou George J.C.'s Community Park. This mud racing event is sanctioned by the National Mud Racing Organization. This is the cut tire class, Rich. Gary, and let me explain the cut tire class. What this is, is these vehicles run DOT approved tires, street legal tires, but they can cut any configuration in the tires on what they think is going to give them the best traction. A good crowd on hand, lots of sunshine, lots of mud, 200 feet the length of this mud bog here this afternoon. Our first combatant is Bad Habit. Chevrolet powered 427 cubic inches out of Tiffin, Iowa. This is Byron Tinky, and these guys come in from all over the country. They do, Gary. These guys are from all over the place, and they're the best from all over the United States here today at this race. A good quick run, 3.364 for Byron. We have had some drought conditions here in northern Florida. Consequently, the ground is soaking up the water and perhaps not as much mud as we would hope for in such an event. And what we're going to see later on is these guys are going to start getting off the line quicker and quicker every time they run. Now, you can see a lot of water here when he first takes off. Later on down through the class, it's going to get a little dry, and they're going to be coming across there real hard, and they're going to be watching these other vehicles run. Good shot there of how the suspension works as Byron climbs on the binders and stops this vehicle in that uh, very lengthy shutdown area. Right, Gary, as we can see here, as you can see, the finish line is where the poles end. The rest of that is shut down area and a lot more that you can't see. These guys need every inch of that to stop these vehicles. Well, this is a real departure from how this Fiat began life. This is a Fiat, though, powered by a 454 Chevrolet, the driver from Mechanicsville, Virginia, a welder by trade. Chuck Brown, this is the Mudaholic. A little trouble in the shutdown area there, and there's the time, 3.439. Yeah, he did have a little problem with that shutdown area. As you can see there, too, at the beginning, he got a little crooked. He got in them ruts, and that's going to slow him down a little bit. But as soon as he got through the middle of the pit, he was doing real good. And right there in that sand, he got a little crooked. As you can see there, them ruts are going to throw you around, bounce you around. It makes it real hard to control these vehicles. Now, you can believe the other competitors are watching and making mental notes of what type of track conditions that we have here as we take a look at Magic Moments. The Chevy 540 cubic inches blown and injected, and this is the veteran from Merritt Island, Florida, John Crutt. And Gary, look where he's lined up, right in the middle, but he looks like he might get pushed to the left a little bit because his left tire's in them rut. In a spray of muddy water, he covers the distance in 3.6. Three zero. Now watch here, Gary. As you see, he did come over to the left. You can see him following the ruts through the pit. And these guys want to try to get out of them ruts and make their own, and they can skim across the top a lot faster. Coming up next, let's see exactly what the gambler has in mind. This is Garland Walls out of Port Orange, Florida, sporting 468 cubic inches, a Chevrolet Blazer. And Gary, we do have a lot of different vehicles here. Now, this Chevrolet Blazer is modified just a little bit. As you can see where the engine's almost in the front seat, 
and he almost sits in the back seat. So we got a lot of different vehicles here today. All fiberglass body for the gambler. A good ride at 3.526. He had a good start off the starting line. He hit that run right there okay. His front tires are in the air a little bit. He's losing some traction there, so he's losing time. But he keeps it straight and goes through the finish line nice and straight. And here's the guy the fans have been waiting for, a local favorite in showdown. This is Ricky Richardson. He comes from just a stone's throw away in Southport, Florida, in the big 605 cubic inch Chevrolet. It's alcohol injected, nitrous oxide, and we have the onboard camera. You're in for a thrill because momentarily you're going to go for a ride on the showdown. There's a time of 3.443 for the Jeep. And Gary, as you see, now his tires are cut a little bit different. He's going to get a little different traction there. He's bouncing around a little bit, a little bit squirrely, but he still makes a good run. All right, here it comes. Here's mud in your eye as you're along for the ride. Showdown through 200 feet of mud. And that's the way it looks from the cockpit in the mud racing here in northern Florida. As he gets to the shutdown area, it takes a hard right-hand turn. And Rich has caught up with the driver of Showdown, Ricky Richardson. Hey, Ricky, you had a pretty good run, but you didn't seem to go as fast as what a lot of people thought you would. Well, we read the track a little bit different. We changed the gear to get a taller run on the other end, and the track was hooking harder than we expected. And we put a, we put a taller gear in it to try to get more speed up and short shift with these DOT tires. You expect them to spin a little harder, and we just read the track wrong. Well, Gary, what he meant by that is one to higher gear ratio to get more speed at the end of the track and not as much at the beginning. Well, Ricky is presently third behind Byron Tinky and Chuck Brown. As you can see, no one has made that exclusive two-second club. Fourth now on the list is Garland Walls. John Crutz is now fifth. Well, we take a break to track crew out to massage this mud bog and take away some of those very, very troublesome ruts at the start of the run. We'll come back with more after these messages. A good crowd has gathered here outside Panama City, Florida for the National Mud Racing Organization's All-Star Nationals. And here is another vehicle called Showdown. This is Alan Enloe from Plant City, Florida. A small 355 cubic inch Chevy. I say small, Rich, by comparison with the 4, 5, and 600 cubic inch engines. Right. Another thing you might notice here, Gary, is his engine's in the rear of this vehicle. Three point five six eight, a good ride, and he uses all that shutdown area. But Gary, I'm not sure if that was an advantage putting that engine in the back of that vehicle. Now I think he's got a little too much weight back there, and he's not skimming across the top. Now these front tires come up in the air a little bit, and you need that extra weight up front. Here's a truck they call Tater, a Chevy, five hundred and seventy-two cubic inches from Fredericktown, Missouri. This is Ron Pence. And he's right, right around the corner from me, Gary, up around St. Louis. Now look where he's lined up, all the way to the right-hand side. No one yet has gone that far over, so let's see. He's going to make his own new ruts and see how well he does. He should have a smooth surface for a clean hole shot. Let's watch. What a great run, Gary. Look where he ends up, all the way to the left-hand side. He just crisscrossed over the track. And we have a new leader at 3.045. Again, he starts on one side. The ruts pull him across, but an excellent ride. He takes the lead, and here's Rich. Okay, Ryan, you run pretty good so far. You're just above three seconds. Do you think you're going to be able to hold on to that time throughout the class? No, I think we're going to have to go a little faster. So how's your truck handling so far? Handling real good. You have a nice straight run going down there, so uh, any problems you foresee? No, no, I foresee. Okay, well, good luck to you. Uh, need a little bit once in a while. <laughs> As the drivers say, we'd rather be lucky than good, and here is the first lady of Mud Boggin. This is Paula Harbuck from Ooligan, Oklahoma. She is driving flirting with disaster. And, of course, she watched where he lined up, Gary. As you notice, she's in the exact same place. What a great ride. Look at this. Under three seconds, 2.980. She went over the mud and not through it. And Gary, she went over the mud into the record books. That 2.980 is the fastest time for a 200-foot track. 
Well, Paula can savor that new record as we take a look at Keith Addison out of Bartlesville, Oklahoma, in high anxiety. The Chevrolet, 439 cubic inches. And look at this front end extended out in front of the vehicle, and his rear tires are tucked up underneath. He's going to have two separate sets of ruts with his front and rear tires. And a good run at 3.168. That is third fast this afternoon for Keith Addison. As we take another look at this run, Rich has caught up with a real favorite of this sport, Enos Thomas. Enos, your first run out with this new machine. How do you think it's going to handle? I got no idea. <laughs> you know, your guess is good as mine. Okay, well, wish you good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. The crowd has been waiting to see this creation out of Grovetown, Georgia, Mad Max, powered by a Chevy, 615 cubic inches. The Chevy mounted behind the driver. A most unique creation in a very low center of gravity, Rich. That's true. Now, what's going to happen here is he's not going to do a lot of bouncing around and get his front end up in the air lock because the weight of himself being up there is going to help keep that front end down on the ground. Well, he got the rear end up in the air as he crossed the finish line at a 3.226. Now watch this, Gary. He got a good jump off the line. Now he's got good control of the vehicle. It looks like it's handled real well. He gets a little out of shape, but it's right at the finish line, and he gets a good run out of it. Well, Rich, you work your way over to Enos. We'll give him a chance to take his helmet off and see what he thought of the run in the Mad Max. Well, Enos, what do you think about the first run in new vehicle? How'd it work out? Well, I backed out of about halfway. I think it's going to be a real ride. We'll find out in the paddle time. Okay, well, good luck here. Thank you. It's going to be a real ride, he says. We'll see. But right now, let's take a look at Shane Back from Jeffersonville, Kentucky. This is the Attitude Adjuster with a 3.103. Gary, as you see right there, his air cleaner came off the front of his injector. That shows you what kind of a rough ride these vehicles do out here. But that puts him in third place. We take a look now at Stephen Price from Meridian, Mississippi, and the great Grand Mudder. It's a Chevy, 488 cubic inches, and again we see a long wheelbase. The time, 3.589. And Gary, you see where he started on that right-hand side. Now, he did a good job keeping it nice and straight, and he didn't have any ruts to fool with, but it still wasn't a very good time. From the neighboring state of Georgia, from Marietta, this is Buster Smith in Mud Muscle. This is a Chevy Big Block, 550 cubic inches, with Pontiac heads. It's injected alcohol. And the time for that run, 3.207. Now let's watch the start here in the replay. It shows you the strength of these vehicles, how you can just dump the clutch and get all four tires spinning and make a good pass. And here's a good look at a cut tire as George Gregory in the new breed begins the stage. And now Rich is caught up with Buster Smith. Right now, it seems everybody's running real close right in the middle of the field. Is there any reason for that with the mud pit? I think it's just a real good pit. It hooks hard. Uh, everybody, Everybody's just got good running trucks. They go straight, and it's just a bunch of good competition. Okay, well, Buster, good luck in the open class. Thank you, Rich. Up next in the new breed in a Tyler, Texas, is George Gregory, a big janky 555 cubic inch power plant. And a good, quick ride at 3.041. Gary, if you notice, he's one of the very few guys that run a windshield, and he needs it for the mud that he throws up. He's run that janky engine, and they have a sound all their own with that horsepower. That put him in the second place. And here comes the Pepsi Challenger from Waxhaw, North Carolina. This is Jody Kelly, a Chevy with 488 cubic inches. Three point two three zero. Boy, he had a wild ride here. As you can see him, he's fighting that steering wheel to keep that vehicle straight. He does an excellent job of driving and getting right through the finish line nice and easy. Coming up next, this is the one they call the stud, a Ford 351 cubic inch engine, Mike Pastina out of Metair, Louisiana. Of course, look how low he's sitting down in that vehicle, too. Now, I don't see how he can see. He's going to be driving by the seat of his pants on this one. A blue frame and a hot pink body. The 
completes the run. Oh, he lost the blower at 3.810 and popped the blower right off the engine. I'd say he had a little bit of raw fuel and raw nitrous oxide sitting down in that blower when that ignited. Here comes the fire truck. You can hear the siren as he climbs out. He's okay as we look again. Now, Gary, as we see, it looks like a big explosion, but just that raw gas and stuff, he really didn't do a lot of damage to the engine, just blew the blower off the top of it. He's okay. He gets out of the vehicle. There's not a fire to put out, and it's just a bunch of raw fuel that's just built up inside the blower. Well, now we'll have to pull the stud off the racing track, and as we do so, we'll tell you that Paula Harbuck, with that national record run of 2.980, continues to lead in flirting with disaster. George Gregory, the new breed, second, and Ron Pence in Tater is now third. In fourth position, Shane Back with Attitude Adjuster at 3.103. Then number five is Keith Addison in High Anxiety. And Buster Smith in Mud Muscle is sixth. So we'll take a break on Trucks and Tractor Power and come back to Bayou George near Panama City for more mud racing. The fans enjoying the warm sunshine of northern Florida. They have also been treated to a new national record run turned in by Paula Harbuck in flirting with disaster. Let's have another look at that time of 2.980. Gary, like a lot of the other drivers, she started off on the right-hand side, worked her way across the track, but she did it a lot faster. As you can see right there, it was a beautiful run. Well, nobody has done it faster than 2.980, a national record. Let's see what Chad Miller can do now out of Vandalia, Ohio, near Dayton, in the Instant T, powered by a Rodex 438 cubic inch engine. Of course, Gary, there's no limitation to cubic inches or horsepower. Now, one thing about horsepower, now, what he's doing here, he's got to let this vehicle warm up to just the right temperature. If it's too cold, he's going to lose horsepower, and if it's too hot, he's going to lose horsepower, so he's got to have the temperature just right. And I would say he had the horsepower. Look at that, 3.015. That is second fast this afternoon. Look at this, dead straight down the mud bog. An excellent ride, and Chad Miller is standing by with Rich. Okay, Chad Miller with Instant T. So far, you're number two, but there's a half a dozen vehicles left to run. You think you can hold on to that? Yes, I had a very good run. We've been working with the car, having a lot of problems controlling it and keeping it in bounds, and we finally did keep it in bounds, and uh, nice straight pass, and I think it'll hold up. That's one of the main things is a nice straight pass, not going out of bounds, is that right? That's right. That's probably about 85, 90% of the game is getting straight down the track. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Thank you. And here is the Port Brothers Express with 1,100 horsepower from the Chevy, 468 cubic inches from Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Daryl Ovington. Bouncing just a bit as he crosses the finish line at 3.499. It wasn't a bad run, Gary, but as you can see here at the beginning, he's bouncing through them ruts, and that's where he lost it all right there. Now, he kept in it and made a good run out of it, but just not good enough. Up next is Rick Gary in the Mud Shuttle 2 out of Anderson, South Carolina. He has a Chevy with 355 cubic inches. Listen for the RPMs to pick up as he nails the throttle. Well, he went sliding across the track at 3.493. And Gary, they're all having a little rough time here at the starting line. As you can see, him bouncing around not having full control of that vehicle to get a good straight pass, and there's where you pick up all your time, so he lost time on that run. Our last competitor this afternoon, the Wild Streak, Craig Underwood from Merritt Island, Florida, road deck, 468 cubic inches, and he is trying to shoot down Paula Harbuck's national record of 2.980. Doesn't do it, 3.457, and the lady has won it here this afternoon, Paula Harbuck, as we take another look at the run of Craig Underwood. And watch Craig trying to steer away from that right sideline there, but he does not have any luck with it, Gary. And Paula Harbuck with a national record run of 2.980 takes the victory here this afternoon. Flirting with Disaster, the name of her creation, Chad Miller in the instant T second at 3.015. Third went to George Gregory, the new breed, at 3.041.
Ron Tess was fourth, and Tater at 3.045. Shane back fifth with the attitude adjuster at 3.103. And Keith Addison sixth, high anxiety, 3.168. Here's your winner standing by with Rich Hooser. Nobody was in the two points, two seconds today at all. Everybody else was in threes and fours, so you got to feel real good about that. I feel ec uh, ecstatic. I feel great. Have you won a championship like this before? I've been in the uh, top five uh, for the last three years with the Cruise Extra Gold Series that we ran indoor pits. This uh -huh. is the first 200-foot pit I've run in two years. I've been used to the 80-foots indoors. Uh, well, you proved everybody out here that you could do it, so congratulations again to you. Thank you very much. Okay. And once again, we take a look at that record run at 2.980 for Paula Harbuck in flirting with disaster. So long from Bayou George in northern Florida.